Guys, I did not expect to get this video thrown at me today, but we're going to go ahead and absolutely check this out here. Uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson explains the three body problem. Uh, this is a suggestion via Discord. And before we even jump into this video, I'm sure there are going to be some who just don't, um, they may not understand what's happening here. So let's talk about the two body problem for a moment. Um, in terms of like physics and astronomy, uh, the, the two body problem is... It helps us, guys, right? I mean, basically what it does is um, it tells us the motion of of uh, two celestial bodies and, you know, how much gravity they basically require for them to move. Basically, I'm trying to, I'm trying to you know, bring it down a little bit, but that's basically what it does, right? And I think to understand this, you probably need to know maybe Newton's law of motion, um, overall have some type of knowledge on universal gravitation, um, Johannes Kepler's uh, law of planetary, uh, planetary uh, motion, right? Like, you need to kind of understand all of these things to kind of put a really, put a, put a solid grasp on the actual problem itself. Now, um, the two-body problem can be explained, the most part through math, solid math. Uh, the three-body problem changes things up unnecessarily, right? And now we're just talking like chaos theory, guys. This is not even a thing. I don't even want to talk about this, right? But <laughs> because there's no explanation for it, like we can have a conversation, but we can't, well, this explanation, but we can't solve it. Right? It's an unsolvable problem. I think we should probably wait for AI to have the to, to hopefully have the, the computing power to, to figure this problem out. Right. But if Neil deGrasse Tyson is going to try to explain it at the very least, I'm sure he can explain it better than I can. Guys. Right? But anyway, let's go and jump into it. You're going to get an act coming from the channel Star Talk, guys. Astrophysicist explanation of the literal three body problem without reference to anything that's shown up on streaming services. And that okay. means he's not going to ruin the show for you. <laughs> I don't know anything about <laughs> I don't know anything about the show, but I do know enough to describe the three body problem to you coming up. All right. Go ahead and skip the intro, guys. Let's let's start simple. Okay. 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 So as we know, the moon orbits the earth. Right. Right. But that's not the right way to say it. Okay. Okay. All right. The moon and the earth orbit their common center of gravity. Ooh. So Earth is not just sitting here. Right, and the moon is going around. Going around it. it. Right. They feel in their common center of gravity. You know where it is? It's a thousand miles beneath Earth's surface, mm -hmm. along a line between the center of the Earth and the center of the moon. Got you. Okay, so guys, yeah, definitely Newton's law of motion. So as the moon moves here, that center mass line shifts. shifts. Okay. Mm. So that means Earth is kind of jiggling right. mm -hmm. like this as the moon goes around. Gotcha. That's their center of mass. All right. This is the two-body problem. It is perfectly solved using equations of gravity right. and mechanics. Makes sense. Perfectly solved. Yeah. Yeah. Isaac no. Newton solved it. Okay. Bring, bring Mars in now. That's your man. So that worked. Then right. Isaac applied the equations to the Earth-Moon system going around the sun. Okay. Okay. <laughs> that worked too. Mm-hmm. So in that system, let's ignore the moon for the moment. It's Earth going around. It's another two-body system. Another two-body system. All right. right. But then he worried. He said every time Earth comes around the back stretch and Jupiter's out there. Right. Jupiter will tug on it a yeah, little that's bit. That's a lot of gravity. A little right. bit yeah, little... tug on it. Hey. Hey guys, keep this in mind here. The, more, uh, the larger something is generally, the more gravitational pull it has on... Um, on whatever that comes near it, right? Jupiter, but tug on it a yeah, little that's bit. That's a lot of gravity. A little, little right. bit, little... tug on it hey. as we come around back the other side. What's up, Earth? All oh, right, and then it comes around again, tugs on it again. Hey, what's up, Earth? Right. And of course, everybody's moving in the same direction around the sun, so the Earth would have to go a little farther in its orbit to be aligned again with Jupiter, right. but it's going to tug on it. Right. Okay. He looked at all these little tugs, and he says, I'm worried that the solar system will go unstable. Right. Because if it keeps tugging on it, it yeah, keeps pulling, keep it away. pulling away. And the, the previously stable orbit right. would just decay into chaos. Over time. Okay. Okay. He was worried about this. Okay. You know it what he said? Chaos but I know my stuff works. And it's been and it's looks stable to me. Right. So clearly it is stable, even though it looks like maybe it wouldn't be stable. You know what he says? He said every now and then God fixes things. Well, there you go. <laughs> That's the answer. <laughs> Even Isaac knew. <laughs> wow, look at that. Yep. When in doubt. When in doubt. Just, <laughs> just let God figure it out. Right. I can't figure it out. God did it. Clearly, <laughs> we're all still here. There and we go. haven't been yanked out of orbit by Jupiter. Right. But Jupiter the, is pulling on us. So it's right. a God correction. God, God correction. Okay. This, this is the first hint 
that a third body is messing with you. Right. Okay? In some way that maybe is harder to understand. Mm -hmm. Fast forward 113 years. Oh, okay. We get to... Kepler. Uh, Las Kepler. Las. No? He studied... Kepler was the... Um, Johannes, uh, Johannes Kepler was a German uh, from the late 1500s. Uh, apologies, guys. To uh, Laplace. He studied this problem. Right. Okay? And he developed... I don't think he invented, but he developed a new branch of calculus Ooh. called perturbation theory. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay? Unknown to Newton, even though Newton invented calculus. Right. He invented calculus. Right. All right? So he could have done it. He could have said, in order to solve this problem, let me invent I need more, more, calculus. Calculus. Need more calculus. I just need more calculus. I just need more calculus. He didn't do it. Mm -hmm. Didn't do it. So Laplace <laughs> develops perturbation theory, and it comes down to we have two bodies, the sun and the earth in this case, right. and the third one, the tug is small, but it's repeating. Mm -hmm. It's not a big tug. Jupiter's not sitting right here. Right. It's, way it's way out, out there. there. Way out there. It's just a little tug. And so you can run the equations in such a way and realize that a two-body system that is tugged often by something small that it all cancels out in the end. Gotcha. Okay? So when it's out here, the tug is a little bit okay. that way. But now it's over here, and the, the tug is less. Right. All right? And then sometimes... It's tugging you in this direction when that's the configuration. You add it all up, it all cancels out. And it just but cancels. Newton could not have known that right. without this new branch of calculus. Okay. Okay, perturbation theory. So that took care of that third body. Gotcha. Where solar system is basically stable, okay, for the foreseeable future in ways that Newton had not imagined, in ways that Newton required God. Right. Okay. okay. Oh, by the way, just a quick aside, this is now, we're up to the year 1800, do uh, you know who summoned up these books to read them immediately? Because the, the, it's a series of books called Celestial Mechanics. Okay. Celestial Mechanics. Napoleon. Ah! I am Napoleon! <laughs> Napoleon, who read all the books he could on physics and engineering and metallurgy. Man. Look at that. Okay, he wasn't just a tyrant. Right. He was like a... He was a smart, a smart tyrant. A smart tyrant. <laughs> <I wasn't. laughs> All right. So he summons up the book. Doesn't he, Doesn't have to be translated because they're both in French. Right. He reads it, goes to Laplace and says, Monsieur, this is a beautiful piece of work. Brilliant. But you make no mention of the architect of the system. He's referring to God. And hmm. Laplace replied, Sir... I had no need for that hypothesis. Ooh, that's a mic drop. Ooh, Ooh. that is tough. Man. Ooh. Mm. That's a dig on Napoleon and, and on, on Newton. Newton. Yeah. And it, on Newton. I have, oh, man, look at that. Yeah, All that? right. So, I mean, let's we'll keep see. going. Go ahead. Go ahead. So now, let's say we have not just the planet and one of its moons, but let's, let's say we have a star and another star, double star system. Right. Famously right. portrayed in what film? Uh, star Wars. Star Wars. Yeah. All right. Of course. So those two suns and the planet is stable. And I'll tell you why in a minute. Mm -hmm. But if you take a third sun and put it there, about approximately the same size, then what kind of orbits will they have? Right, give me two fists. Here. Chaotic ones. Here. Okay. okay. So... I'm feeling this one, but right. now I feel that. Where's right. my gravitational allegiance? Right. You don't am know I, where to go. Am I going to come through? Right. But Whichever one is bigger. But then am I going to go that that way or this way? So I'm coming into the system. And do I go to you in orbit? But wait, I, and you're still coming around here. Right. Now I feel this. And so it turns out the orbits of a three-body problem are mathematically chaotic. Yes. I was about to say, that did not seem very stable. <laughs> Some no. has to give. Well, this is this is in the series, this what some, we're talking about. Guys, and this is why, anytime I've ever looked into this uh, this this problem here, it all just ends up in chaos theory. Guys, why even bother even trying to question this anymore? Um, or maybe we just don't have, excuse me, guys. Maybe we just don't have weird hiccups. Um, well, maybe we just don't have the knowledge yet. right? Just like Newton didn't have the knowledge at the time. Enough to basically explain this away, guys. It could be, guys. We we think that we're super smart, 
but give it 200 years. I'm saying, I, don't, I haven't seen the series. I know. I'm just saying, something has to get. What That's series? Two of these are going to collide. Right. One is going to get ejected. Right. Okay. That is the classical three-body problem. Three objects of approximately similar mass trying to maintain a stable, a stable orbit. orbit. And it goes chaotic with just three objects. Right. Look at that. It is an unsolvable. You can, let me say that differently. You can calculate incrementally what's happening until and track it until the system crazy. dies right. Right. Or, or, or splits apart or whatever. But you cannot analytically predict the future of the three-body system because what chaos will do for you in your mathematical model is if you change the initial conditions by a little bit, right. a little bit, yeah. the solution diverges. Further down the line, it goes, it goes crazy. crazy. It's not just a little bit different later right, on down the exactly. line. It, it is, is exponentially, exponentially different. different. Correct. Wow. With the, with the smallest increment of distance. Right. So I'll say, I'll move you in this direction, in this model, and then in a slightly different direction in the other model, it goes chaotic. That's what we mean by chaos. Right. Okay. Okay. It's mathematically yeah. defined. Okay. Okay. So now there's something called the restricted three body problem. Oh, right. Okay. Okay. All the right. restricted three body problem? Never heard. You have, to give me your two, your two things Here's back. The okay. Two planets. You got that. Okay. Two bodies. You got your two bodies. Now the third body is little. Uh huh. No. Now you two <laughs> will orbit each other. Right. Okay. And, right. Th and then this, it's not messing with them. No. Right. So, so there's restricted three-body problem. We have two masses of approximately equal and one that's much less than the other two. That is solvable. Right. It's called the restricted three-body problem. Gotcha. Well played. So basically, you have to change the entire idea of it in order to make an attempt to solve it. Because you know the meaningless nature of this absolute tiny celestial body. It doesn't mean anything compared to what? In the Star Wars like an asteroid case... That's sorts. the restricted three-body problem. Right, because you have the two stars and you have the little planet. The little so planet, it's there no it big is. Deal. And it's even better because the planet is so far away that it only really saw one merged gravity of the two stars. Right, okay. You're far enough away. That, that difference is not really mattering to you. Mm -hmm. You maintain one stable orbit around them both. About, around both stars. Both stars. Right, okay? okay, now... If it got really close, then you'll have issues. Because then, it does, again, gravitational allegiance matters. The stars are not going to care, but you will. Because yeah. you'll, you'll get eaten. You don't know where to go. You don't know where to go. I'm in love with two stars. Which way do I turn? <laughs> so anyhow, I, so, so the three-body problem, the takeaway here is it's unsolvable. Yes. Not yes. just because we don't know how to do it yet. Because it's mathematically it's unsolved. It's built into the system. The system is chaotic. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Unless you make certain assumptions about the system that you would then invoke so that you can solve it. And so one of them is a small object around bigger ones. Another one, oh, by the way, in this solution with Jupiter out there, slightly tugging. Right. Yes. It turns out over a very long time scale, this is chaotic. But much longer time scale than Newton ever imagined. Okay. Okay. Longer than the lifespan of our planet? Because, yes, That's we are question. small compared to the sun, but Jupiter isn't. All right. And we're trying to orbit between them. Right. 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 So that's all, that's all. It's not deeper than that. It's not, uh, yeah. Right. Yeah. I could have said the four body problem, but this problem begins at the three body but, problem. Right. Right. Because you're going to have the same thing in four bodies or exactly. five bodies. It it's going to be the same. And we have star clusters with thousands of stars right. in them. Exactly. And they're all just orbiting. Right. You, we, we have to, we can model it, but we cannot predict with precision where everybody's going to be at any given time. Okay. Because okay. it's chaotic. The chaos. So it's basically, it's about the chaos. It's about the it's chaos. It's all about the chaos. Yeah. So what we do is we, we model the chaos. Right. Right. We say this will be statistically looking like this over yeah, time. We can't You're not going to track one object Nothing. through the system exactly. for eternity. That's not going to work. That's so cool. Yeah. All right. That is so cool. There it is. All right, another explainer slipped in. Okay. From Torn from the pages of science fiction. Yes. Just, the, uh, just a simple description of the three-body problem. Guys. Huh. Um, now, again, I've always looked at this as completely unsolvable and i'm glad that uh his response at the end was this is unsolvable uh you have to have a very specific instance of something in order for it to make it solvable but that's that may not be the case when you actually need to have the actual math and it's wrong right you can't figure this out 
absolute chaotic, uh, pure chaos theory, guys. That's it. Um, and I want to take back what I said earlier, <laughs> right? If if AI would be able to do this eventually, um, I would like to think that that AI is a hundred to a thousand times smarter than we are, right? So I would expect that uh, at least AI will, will lead the next. Um, calculus or, or physics-based uh, revolution here, guys, right? to a certain extent. Obviously, we don't need anything like you know Skynet or anything or, or any of that nonsense, guys, but um, I do hope that we can at least use AI for something absolutely meaningful rather than making thumbnails and, and just, and you know, making fake songs and things like that. That'd be great, guys. Seriously. But all right, listen, <laughs> if you guys can solve the three-body problem, let me know in the comments, guys. I'll catch you guys later. Guys, before we go, are you guys subscribed to the other channels? Logical Movie Reviews with Mr. L. Boyd along with Mr. L. Boyd Music. Both are found in the description. Check it out.